Hello everyone, my name is Maciej Suminski. Some of you may know me as Orson. I work at CERN and for the past few years I have been regularly contributing to KiCad. And I'm going to, sta to start with a no, maybe not very humble statement, but I think KiCad is a really great tool. It has a lot of awesome, awesome utilities. And it also has a text format, which is, uh, which is a really good thing because it plays well with version uh, with Git with other uh, source version control but it's also abused in certain ways because due to due to the nature of human readable formats people are tempted to uh, change them manually or or write external scripts that that well do do what is missing in KiCad the problem is when you manually edit a file uh, well, it's a one-time solution. When you write an external script, uh, well, it solves your problem, but then it's not, usually it's not very well adverti advertised. Uh, well, and if, if the file format changes, you need to fix it and stuff like that. So perhaps maybe a better idea would be to write code directly for KiCad, have the problem solved once and for all, and, you know, give back to community and have everyone take advantage of that. So today I would like to tell you how, how is it done in KiCad, how easy, how easy is the interface for creating new tools. And to start with, we need to know how to build KiCad. It's, it's not a very big deal. Then a few words about the tool framework. I think that's the main point here, the interface for creating new tools. A few useful classes, so, so you know what you can use for for dealing with certain problems when, when writing tools. A uh, short example to see how does it look like in real. Uh, a few words about what you can do when you, when you are finished with a tool and then some further information if you need, uh, if you, if you need it. So building KiCad is really quite straightforward. For Linux, you need to install dependencies. It's just a bunch of libraries that usually you can get with, with your package manager of choice. And then these, these five comments will get, you work, will get you a binary. And well, that's a good starting point for further development. For, for Windows, it used to be harder, but since MCS2 people, uh, since, uh, MCS2 people created a really good environment for, for development under Windows, it's really almost the same thing. You just install certain packages, uh, and actually, it's, it's even shorter than, than with Linux. The, the, you have free comments here, so it's it's really easy to start. Okay, so for the tool framework, the tool framework is currently only available for PCB new, but we are going to port it to to the schematics editor as well, to have the well the same way for creating tools in in both applications and probably sh share. Uh, some of the code. <clears throat> there are three major subsystems. Uh, this is done to, to split responsibilities to keep the code cleaner. Uh, the first one is view. It handles uh, display, displaying objects and the rendering process. Uh, then you have model, so all kind of items that you can find either, either on your board on, or on schematics. And then the tool framework which is the code that modifies the model, the, well, the, the, the thing that, uh, that you are going to work with. So here's the basic skeleton for a tool. Uh, there is a base class called PCB tool, and from that you have to implement only a few functions to, to create a new tool. Uh, as, as with every C++ class, there is a constructor and destructor, nothing really special here, you can initialize or, or free your resources. Then there is a reset method where you, where you can react to certain events, uh, for example when you first start a tool or, or when the model is reloaded, so for example if you keep pointers you probably you need to update them because they may, may, might be not valid anymore or when the rendering engine is switched and, and so on. So, so you have a chance to react here before anything bad happens. Then there is also the init, init method. Init is different from the constructor in that matter that all the other tools are already created when, when the init method is called. So if you need to cooperate with something else, that, that's the right moment to, 
to use the tool manager. I will show you later to use the tool manager to to to, to use another tool. And there are also uh, transitions. The set transitions method uh, associates even handlers uh, with uh, particular methods in the class. So if you have a let's say here as in, the, in this example if event a arrives then event handler is responsible for handling for handling the, the event and here's an example event handler uh, there are two main ways of implementing handlers one is a, a single action so if, if there is an event you perform a certain a certain list of operation and, and you finish like you can change position, maybe rotate, flip, or stuff like that. Or you can write interactive tools, and here you can you can have a while loop. Uh, you can keep receiving events until you decide that you are done. So, so for example, if you if you want to create a drawing tool, first you obtain the first click position, then then you wait uh, for for another one, then you can draw a line between them. And well, until the user decides to cancel the tool, or well, it's up to you. Uh, apart for, from creating a new tool, I mean coding it, into uh, you need to add it to the project. And KiCad uses CMake, so so for that you need to modify uh, CMake lists. You need to just to add, add your file there, and you also need to mo notify PCBNU, PCBNU that there is a new tool that you can use. And for that, you just in, in this particular file, you just add a new header with your with your tool, and this this function. And really, that's it. It's in total three lines for registering a new tool. About useful classes, uh, everything in uh, everything in KiCad that you can modify, or uh, I, I mean for for model, uh, is based on EDA item. Uh, it's a quite vast uh, hierarchy, so f so here I can only show you the items re related to layout. Uh, there is the base class board item, and then well, b most of the classes are I think self-explanatory. You have paths, tracks, vias, zones. Well, m maybe not info item is is not a clear thing, but uh, it's a data structure that that holds information about. Uh, nets, so so you can ch check their their name or net code. Pr probably you you will also need that need that at certain point. Then when it comes to the UI interface, which are called frames in in WXVJS nomenclature. So here again, uh, I had to restrict the, the hierarchy only to the board, uh, board uh, related related classes, but it's also I, I think quite clear what every every of the class does. Uh, and most likely, most li likely you are going to work with the, the these two guys. One is the footprint editor, and the other one is layout editor. And usually, this is the place where where you add your tools. Then we also have a notion of commit. Uh, we realize that there are, when writing tools, there are certain parts of code that are repeated. For example, uh, when, when you add a new item, then you need, you, you need to create an undo entry so it can be reverted later. Uh, update the board, update view. Uh, well, if, if, if you are modifying connected items, then Rastness has to be updated. So avoid, so in order to avoid problems, Potential problems that that probably would happen if someone f forgot about one of these operations. We created commit, and if you are familiar with Git, probably it, it, it looks quite clear. You create a commit, then you decide what ch what kind of changes you, you want to introduce, either creating new items, removing them. Uh, for modification, you need to first save the, save the state because if you first modify the item and then you save the state, then well, it's it's, uh, it's already too late for for storing changes. <laughs> and then once it's pushed, uh, commit takes care of updating all the interested parties. So th that's it about, about notifying other subsystems. Uh, there are also two actions. 
uh, tool action represent an activity that you can perform in PCB new. So for example, if you are writing uh, an action to, to, to flip a component, uh, to flip a selection, uh, you just create a tool action that is named usually in a, in a way that first you have the tool, uh, the, the application, then there's the parent tool, and there's the, the action that is performed. You can decide whether the action is global, so it, for example, it can apply to all tools, or it might be j just related to a certain tool, uh, so, so we can limit the scope. Then you can also define hotkey if you want, uh, a label that is going to appear if you are going to add it to a menu, to, to a right-click context menu, and a hint that, that will appear when you hover, uh, hover the mouse over the entry, and perhaps an icon if you want. And last but not least is the tool manager. And the tool manager is the class that, that uh, th this is the class available for, for every tool in PCB new. And it has dual role. First is to let you interact with other tools. For example, if you, if you, need, to, if you need to know what is selected, then you just uh, ask the selection tool for the currently selected set of items. Uh, or maybe you can decide to clear the current selection, Wh whatever, you just need to see what other tools offer. And it also allows you to access uh, the, uh, access objects that, that you are going to use when writing tools. View, if you want to add some, some drawings, uh, model for modifying the, the board itself, or edit frame if you want to deal with the user interface. <coughs> so now to see an example, uh, I decided to create a simple tool just to illustrate how it's done in KiCad. And it's going to be a funnel tool. Uh, so if you have a high pin count uh, package, it's just impossible to, to root all the pads using a single layer. So instead you need to uh, draw a short piece of track and use a via to, to use other layers for, for routing. So our tool, is go our tool is going to create all the tracks and vias, and after that, the routing should be much easier for you. Uh, the code that I'm going to show in a moment is currently available on, on Launchpad, so if you want to study it or maybe, I don't know, uh, up, up, upgrade it because it's a very simple to write now, then you are free to, to have a look at it. So here we have the header file. Uh, it really resembles the the one that I have shown you before. Uh, well, th there's the constructor. Uh, there's even no need for for destructor. We just have the the, the three methods: uh, reset, init, and and set transitions. Uh, one event handler, and we'll have a, also a context menu. So for that, we are just storing the. Uh, the pointer to the to the menu that we are going to create, and the more more interesting part is the uh, CPP file. So skipping the license, it's important thing. That don't don't forget about it when you are writing code. Uh, first, you you add all the headers that you are going to use. Um, there are a few that probably you are going to use in in most of the tools like tool actions, menus, tool manager, <coughs> and commit. Uh, then, because we are going to deal with modules, uh, you need to know about the class that is going to be modified. And I want to also involve selection tool because I want to operate on the object that is currently selected. Then we define the the, to, the to, tool action for that. So it's it's again really the same thing that I have shown on the previous slide. Uh, constructor really empty because there is nothing to initialize apart from the for, from the base class. Reset also simple because th there are there are no uh, cases when we have to deal with uh, re reloading uh, reloading the the model for example. And then the init function. Here you are going to create a context menu. So first we grab the selection tool because the selection tool also offers the, the right-click context menu that is displayed when you, when you right-click on something. 
uh, we create menu uh, the well the, the, the menu that we are going to put our actions in uh, and simply at at the uh, at the entry the thing with selection menu it has a feature allowing you to decide when the when your menu is going to appear so for that there are also selection conditions uh, so for example here you can decide that the menu has to be shown only when when you have selected modules there there are uh, a few basic selection conditions that you can join using and or operators and th that's about it that, that's our in in uh, that, that, that that's our init method set transitions very very short just run the action fanout method uh, just run the fanout method when action fanout arrives and here is the most interesting part uh, we just get a few objects that you are going to use when, when writing the tool the selection tool uh, so, sorry the selection itself for, from the selection tool the frame the, the window that that uh, that is hosting our uh, well the the, the the, the frame that is displaying PCB new, uh, the model, uh, design settings because we want to know, for example, what are the tracks and via sizes that, that are currently used in the design, and commit for storing our changes. Now the first step that we that we need to do is to compute the distance between vias. Uh, well, j just to illustrate, in uh, we need to know. Uh, what? Oh, okay. Uh, we we need to know what's the distance bet what is the distance between one and its neighboring pad. And unfortunately, in KiCad, they are not sorted in in any special way. So, in order to find out what was the distance, we just need to pick the the first pad, and then iterate over over. Uh, the whole array and just find out what is the shortest distance and is going to be the, the this the, this segment this distance so here uh, here we take take the module from the module we take the pad we obtain it uh, we obtain the position and, and the size of the module and later, this is the, the iteration loop that I just d described. We just get the position of every pad. We check the uh, coordinates. And then later, we compute the distance. If, if it's smaller than what we already computed, then probably this is the distance between the two pads. <coughs> now, when we have all the information that we need for creating the tracks and vias, uh, we can iterate again. Uh, over all pads that are stored in the module and here first we compute where sh where the via should be placed uh, later we create a new track we set all properties like layer where does it start where does it end the net that it has assigned uh, with uh, taking advantage of the board settings class Sim similar thing uh, sim similar thing applies for the via. It's very, it's very similar, and both objects are later added to the commit. And this is the the part that is done for for every pad. Uh, th th this is the part that is done for every pad in the module. And when you have all tracks and vias, we just push it, and it's done. So just to show. Just to show you how does it work, I have already pre-compiled version. <coughs> so let's say we have a board like this, and there is a BGA that we want to root. So when you select it and, uh, and uh, right-click, there is the context menu that we have created, and the entry. Uh, that is uh, that is a counterpart of the tool action that that was added in the CPP file, and that's it. It just creates the the tracks and vias. If you want, we can change the the vias size used used for for the, um, the, 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 the change the use change the size of the vias that are created here, the track size. 
and they are going to be used here. So that's about it. <clears throat> and then perhaps you will you, you would like to see how are other tools implemented. So if you want a few simple examples, I really recommend you to look in the KiCad source code directory PCB new tools. And there are free tools that are really worth studying. I, I think they are well document, documented and they can provide you examples that are worth uh, following. Okay, now if you have created a tool, uh, one thing uh, is to check your code formatting because usually does the does the part when uh, when there is something wrong but uh, sincerely if, if it's only the code formatting then the, then you d don't really need to be worried too much you just you know you need to fix the indent indentation because everyone knows that tabs and, and spaces are important and then if you have just a single patch you can you can send it to the mail to the developers mailing list or if it's a bigger feature it's a, if it's a bigger feature uh, it's quite convenient to create a merge request on Launchpad. Now if you need some more information, there are a few links. If I had to pick only one, I would go for the first one. There's a dedicated page for developers. So there you can find uh, the documentation in Doxygen. Uh, the, uh, the coding, the, the code formatting rules and all the information that might be useful for you. There's also a tool framework tutorial, so it bas basically explains the concepts that I told you about today. And if you prefer human interaction, there is also the quite active developer mailing list and an IRC channel on Freenode.net. The developers are spread around the world, so you can find someone in, in every time zone at every time of day. And I hope it's much clearer right now, and if it's not, it's the time to ask questions. Okay, I was wondering if you could say a little bit about the plug-in mechanism, because you talked about other things, but I, just, just, just what, what's the fundamental basis of the... Uh, the, the, the question was uh, to, to say a bit more about the plug-in plug system. Uh, do, do you mean uh, the tool framework, right? So the fundamental concept of the plug-in system, how, how does it work? Uh, well, here uh, there is the there is there is the interface uh, that well you, you, you can interact with the board. For you, I, I mean, for the tools, it's not like you have a shared library that you, that is compiled somewhere somewhere uh, outside of the tree. So all the tools are compiled uh, and linked statically with KiCad. So so it's not it's not a plugin per se. So it really doesn't have real plugins. Uh, it has plugins for for schematics, uh, for schematic formats, as, as Wayne mentioned, and for uh, board uh, board formats. So it's uh, so it's just saving and loading the files. Yeah, we'll yes. Okay. So all are static. It's not dynamic. Yeah. Either. No, no, no. The reason I ask is because of uh, Wayne and Thomas co commented about about the plugins as being something new, and I was wondering. Something similar to the the GNU cap plugins. Uh, well, for, for the tools, for, for the tools, they, they are not real plugins. For oh, okay. for three D models, for board files and schematics, they they, they are. Uh, oh, sorry. I, I think for three D models, they can be plugins, and for everything else, there is just the interface. Oh, okay. So yeah. So so it's not an extensive plugin system. It's just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Um, is this the same process also for interactive tools, or, is, or is there more to know about this? Uh, the, the question is: Is the process the same for the interactive tools and and the and the example that I have shown, right? Yeah. So, well, basically, yes. The, the only difference is how you write the event handler, because you can have a while, keep receiving keep receiving events, and then you can react to them. Okay, but painting I have to do myself then. Uh, if you modify the object and and use the board commit, it will be it will be done for you. Yeah, uh, but during editing, uh, I have to paint my uh, No, no. It, if if you modify it and okay. use use board commit, it's done. 